Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so this is a new one for me on this channel. I've not done a, a review or a look-see at uh, new apps available, but the latest trend apparently is the Google Map Replacement Tool as available on flightsim.to. So I thought I'd give it a go. I'd uh, install it. I haven't installed it yet. This is the first time. You may have seen a few videos online uh, that already give you a couple of ideas about what to expect, uh, but I thought I'd give a coherent video on how to install how to operate, use, and fly with it, and then how to uninstall. I don't think this is going to be with us for very long because this looks like one of those things that Microsoft is going to want to stamp out fairly quickly. So if you want to have a go with it, probably now's the time before the next update when they may well find a way to switch it off. Also, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a little bit more confidence if you want to have a go yourself, or based on my experiences, you might decide that this really isn't for you. So with that in mind, we'll dive straight in. If this is at all useful for you, please hit the like and maybe the subscribe as well so you can stay up to date with the latest videos. Be sure to check the description below because I'll put a lot of useful links uh, in there for you. So here we go. First thing you'll need to do is navigate yourself to the flightsim.to website, which you'll probably be familiar with. And then if you use the search function, you can type in Google and this will be the first thing that comes up. It's also under the trending apps, I believe. Latest version, it's uploaded on github.com. So um, this might not be the latest update, but I've used the one from flightsim.to. Uh, there's also a video for how to install it, which is pretty good, but I'm doing it from a layman's point of view. So this is the first time I've actually installed it. Notwithstanding, I've set up a few things just to keep things a bit safer. And I'll talk those through shortly. So I think that's enough from that website. So download that. I've placed uh, the file as it's downloaded onto the desktop. And I've already extracted that to the folder on the desktop just for ease of use. Okay, so once you've downloaded the folder, extracted the folder and opened it, opened it up, you'll be presented with uh, these files here. And the one you want to open is README. So I've opened README and this is what you'll see on the right hand side. A couple of important can and can'ts. So it says here, it'll replace Bing satellite image with, imagery with Google Maps. That includes, I believe, the um, page on Microsoft Flight Sim where you select where you want to fly from. So when you zoom in, normally you'll see uh, Bing Maps. You'll also see Google Maps after installing this. Uh, and it will remove the Microsoft's color correction, which brings a more natural color back apparently. So we'll check that out. What it can't do is change anything to do with the auto-generated buildings, trees, and roads. So they'll be the same as before. And apparently photogrammetry is not included. So I'll be interested to see what that looks like. It talks about how to install it here, uh, but importantly, and this is the thing I wanted to see before I started any of this, it says to restore to previous state, delete two lines within the uh, file hosts here. And these are the two lines that you need to delete. So what I've done on the left-hand side is I've got a shortcut to this hosts file, and also I've backed it up. So if we open up the uh, hosts folder, in fact, it's drivers, etc., and then hosts, this is the file that's important. And what I've done is I've copied that and just added dot backup to it. So if anything goes wrong, I can just restore the original folder or correction original file. And this is what's inside, fairly basic. And it looks like local hosts is down here. So I'm guessing they add some lines to this file. So now that we know how to uninstall it, I'm happier to give it a go and install it. So here we go. Okay, so when you're ready to run this application, uh, you need to go to the extractive folder, highlight run.bat, right click run as administrator. You'll then get a command prompt window pop up. And between five or 10 seconds, that was pretty quick, you'll get the uh, control panel. First thing on this control panel is go to proxy. If there is something entered in this proxy window, delete it. Unless of course you need something specific to gain access to Google. You can test connection. Proxy is good. Response time is 0.2 seconds. Cool. So we know the connection works. That is all you need for clicking run. The command prompt will flash up with a few words, one red line, which you can ignore. And at this point, you're now good to open Microsoft Flight Sim. Now I'll give you my top tip is because when I did this first, I didn't uh, delete anything out of proxy. So it was trying to connect to uh, a server somewhere halfway around the world. So what that meant was when I was flying or once I loaded up my flight, it just said my internet connection was too slow. And I guess that's why, because it's uh, low bandwidth trying to connect to a certain proxy. So all I did was come out of Microsoft Flight Sim I closed this down, uh, deleted the proxy settings, test connection, and started again. 
as a reminder at this stage, there is a couple of background applications that you need to be aware of. But if you don't shut this down in the correct order, um, it will be running in the background. And therefore, if you try and run it again, then it'll say um, error, another application is using the port. So let's see what that looks like. So with this open, I'll go control out delete, task manager. And if we scroll down here, nginx.exe. That is the task associated with this Google Map replacement tool. You can end that task. So ordinarily you'd close these down in the correct order and this will close itself. But if it doesn't, if you have any issues with it not opening again, then this might be it. So just right click end task. Uh, and then you'll be able to run it again if you need to. And with that in mind, let's jump into Microsoft Flight Simulator and see what it looks like. So here we are at this stage in the loading cycle of Microsoft Flight Sim. And with this command prompt uh, window in the foreground, you can see that it's now downloading uh, map tiles from google.com. Okay, so here we are loaded up with Microsoft Flight Sim. Uh, I've got some pink information in this command prompt window, so I'll ignore that for now, but it seems like it's doing its thing. Uh, it suggests in the setup video that we need to go to options, general options, and data. Uh, you want to set the Bingwell graphics and photogrammetry to on. Uh, and it recommends uh, rolling cache. I guess it could be on, but the key is to uh, delete the rolling cache. So it has no um, Bing data stored in there. So with that done, let's go pick a place to fly. Uh, so I reckon somewhere in the Alps should be fairly decent to check out. Interestingly, as we're scrolling in and out here, that command prompt is uh, updating. Sunshine on here. We'll change this here. I'm going to put some wind speed on for some water effect. And uh, not there's much water around here. Maybe we should pick somewhere else. That's got some water. Let's go here. Okay, so I've uh, slewed us up to 2,500 feet. Is that in the cockpit of the Melvis PC6? And it looks pretty decent. Seems to be some sort of uh, texture line in the water. Let's go down to the water and see what that's like. I've got to say, this is pretty realistic looking. So I'm liking the colours, that's for sure. Let's go down and take a look at the water. Let's remind me of the weather. So the weather, we had wind, we set, uh, let's set some, whoa, well, hey. Well, I saw some posts that suggest that there's no water animation, but that's definitely water animation. So I'm happy with that. I have to say it's looking pretty sweet. Okay, so that's enough of that. What we're going to do is talk through how to uninstall this now. So I'm going to quit out of Microsoft Flight Sim. You'll then be left with the command prompt and this operator panel on the right here. What I would do is click stop first. Now, just to let you know, so nginx.exe, that is key. If you go to task manager, if you have any issues with this saying there's an application still using a port or you accidentally shut down uh, editing in the wrong order and something's running in the background, then you can control that delete task manager and close nginx.exe. And that is the process applicable to this program. So this is now stopped. So we can close this down. 
Once we've closed that panel down, this will say press any key to continue. And then it closes down. That has now closed down the program. Click into that. Remember from the readme file, we need to delete a couple of lines from the host um, file. So if we open this up, I've created that link, remember from the beginning. And this is the file here, hosts. Now I use uh, Notepad++, but you can use regular Notepad. And in actual fact, it looks like it's already been removed. We're just going to the readme file. To restore previous state, go to the host file, which we have done, and delete these two files. Done. In actual fact, maybe these files or these lines in this file will only be there if you shut it down slightly incorrectly. Let's try that, shall we? So if I go run, you must run as administrator. This window pops up, this window pops up. We click run, it links, excellent. Now we go back to the hosts file and edit. You can see these two lines are now back in here. These are the two lines that you would normally have to delete. I'll close that back down because it's an active file. Move you out of the way. So now we go back to the control panel and click stop. Process has been terminated. I'll then close this, press any key to continue, and that closes that. Now if we go back to the host file, I'm hoping these lines have now been deleted. So it looks like it's now updated to the point where it will automatically revert to its original state without you having to worry too much about it. So let's uh, reload Microsoft Flight Sim, and fingers crossed, it is all back to normal. So here we are back in Microsoft Flight Simulator and hopefully this is vanilla Microsoft Flight Simulator in the sense that Bing Maps is now uh, the primary option. I'm going to reverse what we did before or at least check what we did before in terms of going to options, data. I'm going to delete the rolling cache. In fact, rolling cache is off. I'm going to switch it on now because I would like the rolling cache. 10 gig, that works. Now we've got photogrammetry on and Bing World, uh, Bing Data World Graphics. So that's all turned on. Okay, so welcome back. I'm back in the flight sim. I'm back in the PC6. Uh, and I've set the wind to give me some uh, water effect, which we have. One thing I will notice, though, is the areas around the coastline are not very good in terms of the quality of the water. It's hard to tell. It's all about the water, really. Still got the dark areas on top of the hilltop. That'd be very difficult for satellite imagery to pick out anyway. This is certainly not a precise comparison. This is more to see how easy it is to install, run and uninstall uh, this application. OK, so as a reminder, what have I learned from this? I've learned that downloading and running the application is fairly simple. The key points to take away from this is back up your hosts file, as I talked about earlier. And then it's all about the order in which you open and close it. You must run the run bat as administrator. You must be patient for it to load. And you must make sure the proxy is blank. If there's anything in here, delete it. Test connection, it should say uh, it's a good connection. Click run and then load Microsoft Flight Sim. When you're finished with Microsoft Flight Sim, close Microsoft Flight Sim. Click stop on the control panel here. Once these processes have been terminated, you can then go ahead and close this and then press any key to continue on the command prompt to close it all down. If you have any issues with something running in the background or being slightly buggy, then close everything down, go to Task Manager and end task on NGINX and that should remove everything you require. You can then go back to your hosts file and delete the two lines if they're still there. But like I said, today, when I did it myself, it removed those automatically. And that is it. If you're still here, then please uh, like, subscribe, just help support the channel. 
I hope this has been useful for you. If there's anything I've missed or something you've seen that's different, please check a comment in the uh, comment section below. Be sure to check out the description area for any links and top tips that I've got there. And until the next time, take care and fly safe.